Hi everybody, I'm Jack the Rambling Raconteur and I hope you're doing well. This is going to be my October marginalia video, uh, despite being November 12th. Uh, so that's where I like to just, you know, identify and describe briefly the stories, poems, essays, articles, different things I was reading across the month of, no of October that I didn't post any videos about. <laughs> so let's jump in. Uh, it was, this is definitely like the most marginalia month I've had <laughs> in a while. Um, I'm just very busy. <laughs> so. Uh, we continued our poetry readings at night with my daughters. They're loving, uh, they're loving poetry readings at night, um, along with bedtime stories, and they really enjoy ballads. They prefer those like sing-song, rhymey ballads to more, you know, free verse or blank verse, more modern poetry. So we've uh, been dipping through the medieval and Renaissance poets, and they just love that. Uh, Sir Patrick Spence is a, is a personal favorite, and it's a personal favorite of my daughters now. Um, moving on to stories. I came across this book. It's Randall Jarrell's book of stories. It's published by NYRB Classics. And um, I had not read any of Jarrell's like criticism. And this really just has an introductory essay um, on, on sort of the art of storytelling and, and just why it's so valuable. Uh, it doesn't have any critical commentary like in or, or notes on the stories themselves. It's just a, an anthology he edited and wrote an essay uh, introduction for. But I picked it up, I had read a few of them and I liked them, so I was like, okay, let's give it a shot. And I've read some more in November, and this is a great book. <laughs> great collection of stories. It includes, uh, from October, stories I read, A Country Doctor by Kafka, and then Biesian Prairie by Ivan Turgenev, and I loved Biesian Prairie. I read it on October 29th, it was basically like the best Halloween story I read the entire month. And I'll probably do a separate video like on that story, I wanna reread it kind of wrap my head around a couple of things, but I highly recommend that story specifically and uh, this volume. Um, Brian at Bookish did a video on Ray Carver's story Cathedral, and I think that story's okay. I think this is probably Carver's best book of stories. Uh, this is the vintage contemporaries cover, um, but I there are a couple of uh, Carver stories I prefer. I did read Cathedral, and I might read another Carver story this month. He's, he's always interesting. Um, summer, I believe it was Summer at uh, Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats, read uh, Born of Man and Woman by Richard Matheson. So I grabbed, I saw that in her video, grabbed this down, you know, read that and was terrified again for 12 minutes as I am about every like seven years when I read that story. Just an outstanding, outstanding and chilling story. <laughs> so uncomfortable. Um, Jarrell in his commentary was talking about how much he enjoys you know, Kafka's stories, and Kafka was one of the few writers who had more than one story in that anthology, but he kept uh, referring to the Hunter Gracchus. And so I reread that, and that's a story, sort of a fragment, just a really fascinating, strange, Kafka-esque uh, <laughs> story. And of course it is, because it's by Kafka. Squid and the Whale joke. The other one would be uh, that Kafka, of course, is one of my predecessors, and not just on book two. Um, <laughs> as I was watching The Haunting of Bly Manor, I read, uh, I, I found myself willing to give Henry James another shot, and then I realized why I never pick him to be on my uh, pickup basketball team. And if he does end up on my team, I don't pass him the ball because he is so boring. Uh, but I read Sir Edmund Orme and was bored out of my mind. <laughs> Uh, I think my favorite James ghost story is The Jolly Corner. I have read The Turn of the Screw. Um, it definitely threw my mind for a wrench, and then I wanted to throw away the wrench. So uh, <laughs> um, some other horror stories. Let's see. From this one, I read, uh, this is the Library of America's American Fantastic Tales. There's two volumes. This is the first one, which has like eight, uh, 19th century and very early 20th century stories. And so I read uh, Lukundu by Edgar Lucas Wright, which was okay. And then this has Young Goodman Brown by Hawthorne, which is just an absolute masterpiece. One of my favorite stories, and I think just a, uh, an excellent example of like everything a short story, and specifically like a, a supernatural short story or a horror story can be capable of. Uh, I was kind of in the mood to read some more New England stories after that, so I read uh, White Heron by Sarah Orne Jewett a great 19th century American realist writer and uh, a very nice, like an interesting story, you know, kind of pushes it like environmental themes, really just fascinating. Uh, let's see. When I was reading uh, To Walk the Night by William Sloan, there was a reference in it to The Little Mermaid 
by Hans Christian Andersen. So I grabbed my volume of Hans Christian Andersen's Fairy Tales down. I reread that. That's a great story. It's, it's so sad. <laughs> As so many of Andersen's fairy tales are so sad. Um, but I might read another one. I don't know. Maybe uh, The Emperor's New Clothes or something this month. We'll see. These are, these are just always fascinating. And I read some more Jorge Luis Borges. Someone, and I wish I could remember who it was, because I want to give that person credit. Someone said, hey, if you like the Borges-Shakespeare connection, read um, Everything and Nothing. So I reread that. Uh, I read that fragment. I had never read it before. It was fascinating. I then went and reread um, Ragnarok, which was interesting. But I read The Gospel According to Mark, which might be... It's it that probably has moved up into in my estimation of Borges stories into the top ten, up there with uh, the Aleph or and um, Tlan Ukbar, uh, the Compass, um, Garden of Forking Paths. It's just the, the, it's an amazing and scary and horrifying story, Gospel According to Mark. So that one had me thinking for a long time, as Borges often does. And then let's see. So another sort of rabbit trail I ran down was I found a bizarre deal on eBay for the Library of America's like Collected Emerson. So the two volumes of his selected journals and then his essays and letters and then his poems and translations. And the translations are interesting because they have some really strange and I shouldn't say strange, uh, fascinating like Persian poetry and, and uh, verse and, and spiritual verse that Emerson translates into English and you know the that's kind of exposed uh, those poems and the, those verses to English-speaking uh, readers. Uh, but and I, I find Emerson to be a truly fascinating writer, a fascinating thinker. I don't always agree with Emerson, but he's certainly, I think, in, for the United States, a key formative thinker. Um, so I've been reading his selected journals, which is interesting to see his development. They start when he's uh, a student at Harvard and he's uh, in his late teens. And then I'm up to the point where he's now in his late 20s. And so it's been interesting to see how his views have changed, how his views specifically on like slavery have changed um, from being a student who, who's honestly quite racist um, to actually seeing slavery and realizing that there's almost a 180 degree turnaround of, wow, this is wrong. It needs, you know, he's going to become more active in abolition. And you can see those seeds planted as he's going into the ministry, as he's getting married. All these other things are happening, um, but that has that has been one shift. So I've been reading his selected journals, and I'm really uh, finding those very interesting and, and, and useful. And then I uh, I read some of his lectures, uh, the Harvard Divinity School address, uh, his sermon on the Lord's Supper, which I personally like as a you know as a religious person disagree with, but I'll still read his his thinking. Uh, but I read one of his essays from the first series, Circles, which is one of my favorites. Just an absolutely astounding essay. And it got me thinking that what I might might be doing, uh, what I might try to do, is re do a series of videos where I read uh, one of the essays from first series each month. And then post like an individual video about that. And there's 12 essays, so it would be sort of like just a year of just periodically dipping into Emerson once a month. Um, because I like to take time to read Emerson. You, He's such a fascinating writer that you could jump in and read through the first series in one weekend <laughs> and, and then go read through the second series the next weekend and Conduct of Life the weekend after that. But I find that Emerson, you know, even when I disagree with Emerson, I, it, it's just, he's somebody who I like to sort of like uh, contend with, like mentally. Um, so just absolutely fantastic. Um, and then uh, with that, I was, as I was kind of reading Emerson, I was then reading from his uh, his uh, entry in the American Sermons by Library of America. But I also ended up reading, uh, as I was reading sort of Young Goodman Brown, I wanted some more of that, you know, like Puritan thought. So I read from Cotton Mather, uh, not much of a fan. <laughs> and I read uh, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God from Jonathan Edwards, uh, Aaron Burr's grandfather, I believe. I believe it was his grandfather. Um, very famous sermon from the Great Awakening. And I think one that reads very differently now than it probably did in the 17, middle of the 18th century, you know, in the middle of the 1700s. Uh, but I read those and I read, um, oh, what was his name? It was really, he was really interesting. Brother Cooper, which, who was a, um, he was, he was a freedman who was preaching in like Missouri and, uh, Kansas in the territories there. 
Well, Missouri was a state, but Kansas is a territory uh, in like the middle of the 19th century before Kansas became a state. And that, that was really fascinating to see. Um, of course, I'm, continue, I'm nearly finished with the reporting civil rights, which is just outstanding. And then uh, with one of the stories there were, I was reading, there were some references to uh, Galatea, the statue created by Pygmalion that he fell in love with and then, you know, Venus brought to life for him to marry. And so I read that from Ovid's Metamorphoses, of course, but also from Robert Graves' Greek myths, you know, kind of, you get, you get two very different perspectives there. <laughs> one's, one is much more romantic and, and, but I would say both are probably sly. So, uh, and then from the Bible, I was working through, uh, I reread the book of Jonah, Gospel of Mark, and then uh, books of Ruth and Esther. So, outstanding as always. And so this was my October marginalia. Huge numbers of stories, lots of essays, memoirs, journals, just kind of all over the place. November is very much shaping up to be the same way. So let me know if you've ever read any of these. Let me know if you'd be interested in a series of, of videos on Emerson's essays. Uh, I believe the first one would be history. So that kind of fits in with Herodotus, I guess. So uh, Thanks, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Bye.